So now we're finally going to get to who actually discovered these um, ideas, these laws of inheritance. Um, he's a pretty famous dude. Didn't try out to be famous. His name was Gregor Mendel. If you can't tell by his clothes in the picture, he was an Austrian monk, um, which is somebody who dedicated his life to the church. Therefore, he, was, he turned out to be the head of the abbey because he was a pretty cool guy. And he was a gardener uh, because back in the day, there, when there was an, an abbey or a monastery, they used to um, grow gardens to feed people, and they also ran the schools and, and taught the children of the community. They're kind of a, a community center, if you will, that were run by all these monks, these people who had dedicated their lives to God. So um, what, did, what did Mendel do exactly? Well, as a gardener, he started to uh, basically, you know, work with plants. And the plant in particular that really kind of caught his attention was the pea. So he started to notice some things with peas. And most of the peas that we think about today are like round and green and stuff like that. Um, but back in the day, it wasn't like that. The reason our peas look like that is because they've been, you know, made that way. But he knows peas were either wrinkly or smooth. Um, just so you know, all of our food producers have too, but people don't really like the look of wrinkly peas, so they have bred our peas so that all of our peas are smooth now. And they've done that because of all the work that Gregor Mendel did. Without Megal or Mendel, you'd be eating wrinkly peas. So he made an observation. Peas are wrinkly or smooth. So um, the plants then, the nice thing about plants, is that they can be carefully cross-pollinated. You can kind of manage whether plants will um, breed with one another um, by controlling where the pollen goes. So he noticed that wrinkly plus wrinkly peas always gave him wrinkly peas. 100% of the time, if he wanted wrinkly peas, he knew exactly how to get them. If he took a wrinkly and a smooth pea plant, he could get wrinkly or smooth peas. And if he took two smooth pea plants, he could get wrinkly or smooth peas. So he thought to himself, how curious that wrinkly always gives me wrinkly, but smooth can give me either one. How peculiar. Um, so he decided to experiment a little bit. Because what else is he doing? He's hanging out in the garden. He was running a monastery. He had nothing but time to do some experimenting. So he carefully bred and recorded over years of work. And he created this huge body of work. Um, that gave us our laws of inheritance. So he found wrinkly plus wrinkly equals wrinkly 100% of the time. Then he started doing some measurements. And wrinkly plus uh, smooth peas either gave him smooth peas 100% of the time or 50% wrinkly peas and 50% smooth peas. But it was one or the other every single time, and the proportions worked out. Smooth plus smooth, smooth either gave him 100% wrinkly, or sorry, 100% smooth, or 25% wrinkly, 75% smooth, every single time. So he started noticing these mathematical patterns, and he also noticed that wrinkly can hide. Um, so now he takes this evidence, he shows it to some other scientists, and as we've talked about, we come up with a fact. If it can be repeated time and time again, now he knows that wrinkly can hide hide. Um, so if we look here at some family lineage stuff, um, smooth plus smooth can equal smooth 100% of the time, um, which means that we have nothing hiding at all in the parents. The parents are 100% smooth, so the offspring are 100% smooth. Or it can give us smooth 100% of the time and, or sorry, smooth 75% of the time and wrinkly 25% of the time, which means that we have a trait that is hidden or hiding. What is going on, he thought to himself. I, I don't understand how this could work out. And he sued and he sued and he thought and he thought. And then he realized that inheritance must be determined by two factors because that's the only way that you can get a 75-25 split and these factors um, are what we now call genes. 
So every time I draw genes on the board, I always draw the two chromosomes of the two slots. He figured that out without having any kind of electron microscope to have any idea what um, our genes looked like. It wasn't until a hundred years later that we figured out what DNA looks like. So he figured this gene thing out way before we had any picture of DNA. What it boils down to, long story short, is he figured out that if parents had two dominant um, alleles within or traits within themselves, and both parents had that, then it's going to be smooth 100% of the time because all the parents have to give is the two strong or what we call dominant traits. If we have two smooth parents, though, and each of those smooth parents um, have a hidden trait, then we could get a big H, big H. We could get a big H, little H. We could get a little H, big H from the parents. Or both parents could give a little H, little H. And that's how we get that 75-25 split of what they look like because we have one homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive. So the strong wins 75% of the time, um, but the parents give that hidden trait on average 25% of the time, and then we get peas that are wrinkly. So after years of research and tons of data collection, this turns into a mathematical law that we can mathematically predict the inheritance based on probability, right? Um, because we can see the uh, possibility that traits will be passed on. So that's why it's called laws of inheritance because it's mathematical prediction, mathematical probability. Now, human eye colors um, are a similar thing, right? We got big B is uh, dominant for brown and little B is recessive for blue. Then we can have a lot of situations that can happen. So let's say we have a big B, big B parent and a big B, little B parent. They can have a big B, big B. They can both give a big B, little B. They could give, yeah, another big B, little B. So we wind up with, you know, 50% of the time, big B, big B, 50% of the time, little B, big B. And it just gets real messy real fast. So the next thing we need to look at is a better tool for predicting inheritance, which Mendel never created, but luckily enough, a really smart guy did. And that is going to be in our next video.